tonight and study your word and I pray that as we study that your Holy Spirit will guide us, direct us, keep us on track and help us Father um, to honor your word with our entire hearts and spirits in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Tonight we're going to be looking at Peter's mother-in-law being healed and uh, this account is also repeated in Mark and in Luke. Um, interesting, we were in the 8th chapter of Matthew, but it's in Mark, the 1st chapter, and Luke, the 4th chapter. So, verse 14, And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying and sick of fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto him. Now, it, now, Matthew says unto him, uh, she didn't just minister unto Jesus, but she fed everybody that was there. The, the inference is, is that this was not just a healing. It, the, the description at the top, if, if your Bibles have descriptions at the uh, markings of new um, events, it will say healing. <coughs> But this lady had a miracle take place because um, the fever left her immediately and she ministered, all right? So uh, it wasn't over a long period of time, it wasn't over days, but it was, it was an instantaneous thing. Any questions here? Yeah, one. What? The Go ahead. The Bible says, and ministered unto them, prepared a meal. Uh-huh. And then like, it, and like in some parts, uh, Jesus took the, remember when he healed that little young girl and said, give her something to eat? Uh-huh. I just wonder if those are tied into each other. There's always food to, after a big healing. That was the Jewish way of doing things. Well, oh, yeah, they always <laughs> celebrate with food. <laughs> so, yes. Verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with, now some of your Bibles will say devils, um, the actual word would be uh, demons. And he cast out the spirits. Notice this, he cast out the spirits. So these people were possessed. They weren't just <clears throat> oppressed. Because he actually casts out the spirits, okay? With his word and healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying... He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. I just want to stop right here. There are a lot of people who do not believe that healing is part of the atonement. The aton when we talk of the atonement, we speak of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay, Isaiah 53 says... He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our sins he took upon himself. And by his stripes, some say by his stripes or with his stripes, we are healed. All right? Well, many just say that that healing there that, that's spoken of is salvation. That is not healing for the body. However, I want you to notice that in the 17th verse of Matthew chapter 8, Matthew deliberately refers back to the Old Testament. So that there's no doubt that Matthew here says, just as Isaiah said, he bore our sicknesses. Here again, it is repeated that Jesus Christ took our sicknesses upon himself all right so now why does matthew do that can anybody tell me why matthew does that because he was of the tribe of levi and he's proving in his case okay that he is the messiah the all right God given king matthew was of the tribe of levi all right and the tribe of levi was the what the, high priest. the priestly Israel. tribe okay Israel. All right, so he is, he is of the priestly tribe. 
He is identifying that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. But why is he being so specific with this? What, what's important about Matthew's book in general? Yeah, he's writing to the Jews. He's, he's, he's verifying to the Jews that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, all right? So if you're going to prove something to a Jewish person, where would you go? Go to the Old Testament, because that's what they believe, mm -hmm. all right? They believe the Old Testament. They do not yet believe the New Testament, okay? So to get them to believe new ideas, new things, you have to rehearse it from the Old Testament. Now, where else in Scripture do we have a really vivid understanding of preaching being verified by the Old Testament? Jesus. No. Jesus did that, yes. Jesus did that. But there was, there was an apostle whose preaching was verified by the Old Testament. Think of the book of Acts. Think of Paul. What city did he go to? Antioch. Nope. Well, he did go to Antioch. Yeah. But what city did he go to? And it <coughs> says that the people searched the scriptures. Oh. <clears throat> ah, Jephthah. Huh? It would be Jephthah. No, it wouldn't be. How about Berea? The That's Bereans it. searched oh, the scriptures yeah. to make sure that the things that Paul was saying right. were true. All right? So the Old Testament, to verify the New Testament, it is possible to go back to the Old Testament. All right? Mm -hmm. Any questions? And then Stephen did the same thing. Stephen did the same thing. Yep. Yep. That is right. Okay, now verse number 18. Now, when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. The other side of what? Lake Gennesaret. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. I had Sea of Galilee, Gennesaret, and both, is, both are correct because that sea had three names, right? Mm -hmm. What was the other name? The Sea Tiber of Tiberius. Tiberius, that's right, okay? <clears throat> so, and so depending on where you, what part of the lake you lived on, you would call it by a particular name. In fact, when Marshall Crane was with us, he said that if you go to Israel and you tell somebody you want to go to the Sea of Galilee, they won't know what you're talking about. So what is it called now? Um, Knezeret. Okay, that's what they go Yeah, on. yeah. All right, so, so why, okay, we go from verse 17, and Jesus is healing people, and now verse 18, he wants to go to the other side of the lake. So, what's going on here? What, what, what's going on in the space between 17 and 18? What, what are we being told? He's, no. He's being besieged by the crowds. He's being besieged by the crowds, okay. But where, where was Peter's house? <clears throat> it was in Capernaum. Yeah, it was on that side. Yeah, all right. So it was, Capernaum was right on the sea. All right. So he decides he wants to go to the other side of the sea. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And another disciple said unto him, Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me and let the dead bury the dead. All right. In verse 20, what Jesus says about the foxes having holes the birds of the air having not nests, and the Son of Man not having a place to lay his head, does that mean that Jesus didn't have a place to live while he was on the earth? Yes. No. Where did Jesus live? He lived in Galilee. No. Nazareth. Okay. 
Where did he live, though? What house did he live in? Father's house. There you go. He was the oldest son. Okay, so he would have he would have been taking care of his mother Mary at his father's house, and and in John the first chapter, <coughs> James and John began to follow Jesus, and they said, "Where do you live?" And he says, "Follow me." And he took them to his house. They they ate dinner there, and then they spent the night. Okay which proves that Jesus had a house. So, what is Jesus saying in this verse? Foxes had don't have holes or foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. What is Jesus saying here? <clears throat> this earth is not his permanent home. That's right. Okay? Praise God. And that's the way it is for us too. Mm -hmm. What does verse number 22 say after Jesus has this, this other disciple come to him and say, Lord, <coughs> let me bury my father. We talked about this last time. Did yeah, we talk about this last time? Yeah, yeah. Adder, I had a really vivid dream about this. You must have had a really vivid dream. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, I'm sorry. Well, we, we, we no, it's... About spiritually dead, their own dead. Right, okay. They wanted, they wanted to wait around until their parents died, but it might have been yeah. years. Right. The guy's father's still alive. Right. Okay. Yeah, Jesus said, if you're dead spiritually. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so the man wasn't dead yet. He's, the son says, I have to wait for my dad to die. Mm -hmm. All right? And what Jesus says is that you actually die before you're dead. Maybe the son was looking to make sure he got the father's inheritance. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you don't follow Jesus before you die, you're dead before you die. That's what he's saying. Dying twice. You die twice. <clears throat> and when the boat, and when he entered into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the boat was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the seas obey him? All right, let's talk about this for just a moment. As the creator of the world, Jesus did have authority over the wind and over the sea uh, that's going to be experienced when when they see him walking on water when his disciples um, see him walking on water but there's another little thing here that i think is important and that is that um, again <clears throat> when marshall crane was with us he talked about um, how the sea of galilee is in a sunken it's in, it's actually in a bowl and the cliffs around it are high. Now, the, the best I could explain this is when um, I've been out in South Dakota fishing on uh, a reservoir at Mobridge, South Dakota. When you are on the river, the river has cut down into the banks and the banks rise up over the river. There's no trees. So there's nothing to stop the wind, okay? And wind, when it blows, it doesn't just blow straight across. When it, when it comes to a great dip, it goes down, all right? Mm -hmm. So it actually pushes the waves down. So on the Sea of Galilee, the wind isn't just pushing you east to west, but the wind is actually pushing down. The waves are coming up. And, and so the Sea of Galilee, even though it's not a humongous body of water, like uh, it's not it's not as big it's not nearly as big as Lake Superior, but it can be very dangerous because the waves get very um, deep. The swells the, the the boat goes way down in the swells, so the waves are up over the what do they call it the gunwale the, the the of the boat you know the the top part of the yeah. boat. Yeah. So water's coming in to the boat as it is, you know. And so these disciples are, are they're just, they're just frightened. 
don't you care about us? You know, you're asleep and we're going to die, all right? And the, the, the natives in that area often call those winds devil winds, all right? So when Jesus is speaking, it's, it's a two-point thing. When Jesus is speaking to the winds, it's as though he's also speaking to Lucifer, telling him, just shut up. Peace be still. Mm -hmm. My peace I bring. Okay? Any, any, any questions or thoughts while we're here? So what manner of man was this? The people marveled, saying, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. If you were to describe Jesus, how would you describe him? Well, he has many designations, doesn't he? He what? He has many designations, doesn't he? But how would you describe him? If you were to try to, try to describe Jesus. I know a miracle worker is the son of God. Okay, miracle worker. Mm -hmm. Alright. Counselor. Uh, okay. Well, there's about a hundred of them, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? My friend. Pardon? My friend. My friend. My friend. Okay. Yeah, by this time, Jesus was be, be being a friend to people. All right. So, <clears throat> now verse 28. When he came to the other side, into the country of the Gadareans. Now, this is the country of Gadara or Gerasa. There met him two possessed with demons coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come here to torment us before the time? What are these demons talking about here? You've come to torment us before the time. The end of the world, judgment. Okay. Lake of fire. Huh? Or lake of fire. Lake of fire? Revelation, yeah. Okay. Well, what do these demons know at this point already? They know they're doomed. They know they're doomed. <laughs> well, first of all, what what are demons? Fallen angels. Fallen angels. Fallen angels. Yeah. So where'd they come from? Heaven. Heaven. Alright? Having come from heaven. Who had they seen there once before? Jesus. Jesus. Now, not in physical form, right? Okay. They recognized him somehow. They recognized him somehow. We're not exactly sure how they recognized him, but they recognized him as the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And as the Son of God, what did they know about him? That he's going to be bringing the judgment one he, day. That's so. right. They've heard the news. That this guy is going to die and he's going to rise again. And if he rises again, then he's going to be very dangerous to them. He's going to have all authority over them. So at this point in time, Jesus does not have all authority over the demons and over the angels. Right? At least not on earth. How can we verify that? <clears throat> you said something very interesting, Eric. Say that a little louder. At least not on earth. Why at least not on earth? Well, depending on how you believe, but I believe that the title deed was given to Adam in the garden, and then it was given to the devil by sin. Okay, all right. And we verify that on the uh, all right. Matthew chapter 4, when he says, all authority has been given to me, bow down right. and worship me. Right, okay. Um, I guess I want to go just a little bit different direction than that, okay? okay? Um, what does... Hebrews, the first chapter, tell us about Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1. That for this point in time, Jesus what? I can't remember that scripture. He's made a little lower than the angels. Ah. When man sinned, man became lower than the angels. And you say, no, how do you know that? Well, because the Apostle Paul says 
do you not know that there will be a day in which we will judge angels? Mm -hmm. Okay? And what day is that? When we have become totally victorious, we're in heaven, we're in our glorified bodies. All right? At that point in time, we're going to be a higher creation than the angels. Today, the angels are a higher creation than man. What made the change? Man's fall. Sin. Mm -hmm. Sin caused the change. Mm -hmm. So there was a point in time that we were, we were higher than the angels. Sin brought the change. What brought the change? What, what brought the change from the angels being called angels be called demons? They rebelled. They rebelled. So rebellion causes change, right? It causes severe change. Sin causes change. So just as sin causes change, accepting Jesus Christ as Savior does what? It causes change. It brings new change, okay? And, and accepting Jesus Christ as Savior is the beginning of to our total restoration, to where we're going to be one day again restored to our original created beings. What that looks like, I don't think any of us can explain. Paul says, I has not ear, no, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the minds of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Alright? So this is the beginning of something big. So they say, You're come here to, you, you've come here to torment us. We're not ready for that because it's not your time yet. So they recognize that. So this really, if, if, you, want, if you want to talk about prophecy in the Bible, this is a prophetic word by demons. Interesting. Yeah. Because they know that Jesus is going to do something great. <laughs> they're, and they're not going to be able to participate in it. The Bible says that, the, that, that the, the angels desire to look in on this thing called salvation. They don't understand it. Mm -hmm. They don't understand it because they sinned once. That's what I'm just going to say. They sinned once. Got kicked out. And they were... Put in chains of darkness. They watch us sin on a pretty regular basis. And they see God still extending his love toward us. Uh, that's they, amazing. They what? think they could have had that when they blew it. Huh? They think they could have had that. They, they think they could have. They, well, no. The fallen they, angels I'm talking about. Well, they're wondering why they don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. They're wondering why they don't have it. Why is it that God extends his grace and mercy to us, but not to them? And why is that? Anybody tell me why God extends grace and mercy to us, but not to the angels? I've wondered that for decades. Huh? I've wondered that for decades. <laughs> well, I can tell you. It's because on the first day of creation, the angels were blown out of the very breath of God. And so they are fire and they are spirit. And they were created for only one purpose, and that is to do what God tells them to do. On the other hand, man was created to love God. And love requires a decision. So the angels weren't created to make that decision. Now when they fell, they made a decision. Okay? But man was created. And what was man created from? Dust of the earth. The dust of the earth, from by, dirt. By God's hand. By God's hand. And God's breath was blown into us. The only creation that he touched. That the touched. only creation that he touched. So... The Bible says that the earth moans for the day of redemption. So God's entire focus of all the planets is on earth. 
because this is where his plan is being played out. Because when we decide to love God, and boy, some of my friends that, you know, believe in irresistible grace, you know, and all that sort of thing, and when they hear me say, when we decide, they say, well, then you put, you put the whole thing in your hands. No, I don't. I don't put the whole thing in my hands. But I understand this, that God does put some conditions upon his salvation. And that is that we follow him, that we remain in obedience to him. There are consequences if we step outside of grace. You know, so I cannot pay for my salvation. Only God can pay. Only Jesus Christ could pay for my salvation as the Father's total sacrifice. However, I am responsible and accountable for watching over this life mm -hmm. and making sure that I follow him. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay. And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding. Why is it that um, there are swine feeding in a Jewish area? Oh, yeah. Sure Jews, don't don't pork. Jews don't eat pork. Jews don't eat pork. That's a way right. Off, sure. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing. It's a way off. Okay. Because what did I tell you about that lake? Depending on where you lived around the lake. There is. Uh huh. It had different areas. So the Roman colony. That's right. There were there were Gentile areas, mm -hmm. and there were Jewish areas, mm -hmm. and uh, this the this this herd of swine, this herd of pigs, is there to feed the Roman garrison. All right. Mm -hmm. So actually, what Jesus is doing here is taking food out of the mouths of Roman soldiers. <laughs> Interesting, huh? All right, so the demons besought him, saying, If thou cast us out and permit us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished into the waters. And they that kept them fled and went their way into the city and told everything and what was befallen to those who, uh, to those possessed with demons. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. When they saw him, they besought him that he would depart from their borders. <laughs> Interesting, huh? After all that, and then that. After all that, yeah. <clears throat> that okay, okay. Um, uh, where else in scripture do we have somebody that meets Jesus and runs into the city and tells everybody in the city, come meet a man. The woman at the, 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 woman at the well. The at the That's well. right. Okay. So here, the city comes out to meet Jesus, but rather than accepting him, what did they do? They asked him to leave. He just touched their pocketbook. He touched their pocketbook. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want guys like this hanging around. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. What time is it? Not even 845. About 845? Okay. Yeah. Then we're going to keep going a little bit. Verse, uh, chapter 9. And he entered into a boat, and he passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man, sick of the palsy, lying on a bed, and Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, of, son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, I'm not going to try to explain tonight what the palsy is. There are various explanations. The Greek is paralytic. Mm -hmm. Paralytic. He's just a paralytic, okay? Mm -hmm. Some say it's likened to Parkinson's disease. You know, um, others say that it's it's like the polio. I've heard people say it's like polio. All right. 
Um, I've heard other people say that, uh, that it had to do with a severe pain. People couldn't breathe and it would uh, cause them to you know, lose bodily function, basically. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, but we we have this spoken of quite often in scripture, the palsy, and uh, because of the distance that we are from some of these archaic <coughs> names and words, we just don't know exactly what they are. But it was some it was something that would cause a uh, uh, cause the body not to function. Um, and, and, and there, there must have been a lot of them around because we, we run into people with the palsy in Scripture. And so Jesus says something very interesting to this guy. He says, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. It would lead us to believe, right, that mm -hmm. this guy did something that brought this upon him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we don't know what it, what it, what it would be, all right? In our culture, it could be something like AIDS. Yeah. All right? I mean, we don't know. Uh, maybe he was around something that was very poisonous. Maybe he had a, a job that you know required working with things that were very poisonous. Okay? Maybe it was just a sickness, just a childhood sickness. Okay? 